Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking to you about a tweet I posted a few days ago. Why I'm withdrawing from the state championships. So over the last few weeks, my legs have been hurting during practice, and at first I thought it was normal fatigue. I mean, which runner doesn't go through that? But then as weeks progressed on, my feet started to hurt more and more, and this progressed to my legs, and to my shins, and this was going on for about six weeks. At this point, I figured something was wrong. So last week I went to my doctor, and he told me that I had a stress fracture, and this means I can't be running for six to eight weeks. So first thing you're probably wondering is what is a stress fracture? A stress fracture is an overuse injury that happens when muscles are fatigued and unable to absorb shock. The muscles transfer the overload of stress onto bone. As a result of this repetitive prolonged muscular action on the bone, which is not prepared for, the bone may form these tiny cracks. Stress fractures most commonly occur on the lower leg and foot. Over 50% of stress fractures diagnosed occur in this region. Some activities that cause stress fractures include tennis, track and field, gymnastics, and basketball. Anything that has repetitive stress of the foot striking on the ground. So you're probably wondering, how does a person get diagnosed with a stress fracture? To diagnose a stress fracture, a doctor first does a physical exam to look for bruising, swelling, and tenderness to determine which areas might be affected. Next, an x-ray is done. But the problem with x-rays are that they don't show all the details. Sometimes stress fractures are too small to be noticed. The next step to diagnosing a stress fracture is a bone scan. During a bone scan, a patient is injected with the radioactive tracer. After two hours, this tracer travels to all parts of the body. The tracer can bind to two different types of molecules, osteoblasts and osteoclasts. In an area where there are high amounts of osteoblasts and osteoclasts is where remodeling occurs. Remodeling is a process that the bone does to heal itself when there are cracks, meaning that a place of remodeling is a place where there is a fracture. So as I mentioned previously, it takes about four to six weeks to get diagnosed with a stress fracture. So my main question was, why does it take so long? Why is it such a challenge to get diagnosed with a stress fracture? At the physical level, stress fractures can be difficult to diagnose because many different conditions have similar symptoms to stress fractures. The shin pain or bruising and swelling that one might feel also can be seen in compartment syndrome, soft tissue injuries, infection, tibial stresses, and shin splints. The challenge with using an x-ray is that they have limited resolution. This means you cannot see minute details. This becomes a problem because people sometimes get negative results even though they have a stress fracture and don't get the therapy that they need. It takes between three to four weeks for a stress fracture to appear on an x-ray. While bone scans are the most definitive method for diagnosing stress fractures, the specificity of the test is low. This means that a positive result could mean a stress fracture, but it could also mean that you have another condition. Other conditions that can be diagnosed through bone scans are tumors, osteomyelitis, which is an infection in the bone, and avascular necrosis, which is a death of vascular tissue in the bones. So there you have it. Hope you guys learned a little bit about stress fractures from this video. Like I said, I have about six to eight weeks off, so I'll be posting videos more often, so stay tuned. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!